In this class, devoted to the relatively new topic of transitional justice, we will cover six points. One, a recapitulation about different moments in the political life of nations. Two, general concepts. Three, factors conditioning or influencing a political transition. Four, types of political transitions. Five, main transitional measures. And six, lessons from the experience of truth commissions. As stated in the second class of this course, there are different moments in the political life of nations. For each of them, there is a particular set of principles or moral and legal rules. There is a first period, which is a foundational time, whose main principles are usually cast in a constitution. Then there is a time of sustainable life of the political system, which does not exclude tensions and conflicts. However, the system subsists. This second time is subject to the principles of the rule of law and the norms of human rights, as well as by public transparency and accountability criteria. In a third time, a political community may face a period of major crisis, such as a war or a dictatorial rule. The applicable norms are, in addition to the norms of human rights, those of emergency rule and the international laws of armed conflict. Finally, after having overcome a major crisis, a political community enters a time of refoundation or reconstruction. It is in such time that the notion of transitional justice comes to the fore. Yet, for this period of reconstruction, there had not been a set of generally agreed upon principles until the mid-1980s. It was with the Argentinian transition to democracy that governments and academics took notice of the need for the development of principles and policies to address a legacy of recent human rights violations. In the last 30 years or so, there have been more than 50 political transitions throughout the world. It is a sober reminder about the realities of politics that in a majority of such political transitions, new governments did nothing or they put in place incomplete policies when not merely cosmetic measures. The field of theory and practice, which has come to be known as transitional justice, started to be shaped in light of the political transitions to democracy in South America that put an end to the military dictatorships in several of those countries. The first such transition was the Argentinian one, which began in December of 1983. Now, the denomination transition to democracy preceded by nearly a decade that of transitional justice, which is currently the accepted term of art. However, the expression transitional justice may provoke some confusion. It may suggest that justice itself is transient. Further, it may lead to believe that the sole or paramount purpose of transitional policies is to mete out criminal justice. Of course, justice is of prime importance, but the expression transitional justice does not encompass other essential measures in addition to justice, such as truth-telling, memory preservation, acknowledgement, reparations, and the strengthening of democratic institutions. Among the most powerful factors that can influence or condition a time of political transition, one may count a. the type of crisis occurred. For instance, if it was due to religious or ethnic enmities or else to political ideological polarization or to other factors. b. the type and entity of the atrocities perpetrated. c the respective country's political tradition and culture. 
the, the amount of time passed since the worst atrocities were committed, and E, the type of transition, that is how the regime responsible for gross human rights violations came to an end. The many political transitions observed throughout recent history show the following examples among other types of transition. One, a complete military victory, Nicaragua in 1979. Two, the military humiliation of a military dictatorship, Greece in 1974, Argentina in 1982. Three, the electoral defeat of a dictatorship, Uruguay in 1985, Chile in 1988. Four, the recognition that the end of the Cold War deprived the warring parties of superpower support and that it was time to make peace. El Salvador, Guatemala. Five, the political changes that brought to an end the racist regime of apartheid, South Africa in 1994. Six, the reform of a political system to make it more benevolent or more respectful of human rights, but without changing it into a democracy, Morocco in the first decade of the present century, and seven situations in which a peaceful or armed revolution brought to an end a dictatorial regime, but the respective nation has no traditions of democratic rule to draw from, or at least it has none in living memory. Central and Eastern Europe starting in the late 80s, Egypt and Tunisia starting in 2011. One, truth telling about the human rights violations of the past, particularly the gravest ones that remain unacknowledged by the former governments and its supporters. This task has usually been carried out by historical-moral panels or entities known as truth commissions. Two, acknowledgement by all relevant sectors of the respective societies of the violations and crimes committed in the recent past. Three, reparations, whether material or symbolic, individual or collective. The material reparation may consist of a money compensation to the victims, whether in the form of a lump sum or through the granting of a pension. They may consist also in a restitution of a property or an employment from which they were fired as a measure of arbitrary punishment. They may consist, too, of medical rehabilitation from the consequences of repressive measures. Symbolic reparations may consist of the erection of commemorative monuments or plagues and ceremonies or statements intended to honor the victims. Four, criminal justice, including the investigation, the fair prosecution of those presumed to have committed the human rights violations of the past, and the conviction of those found guilty. Pardons, amnesties, and measures of humanity are not excluded but they may not be tantamount to securing the impunity of the perpetrators, nor may they be extended to war crimes or crimes against humanity. <music> Further to the Chilean Truth and Reconciliation Commission of 1990-1991, some other eight truth commissions have adopted the same name notably those of South Africa, Peru, Liberia, and Canada. The reference to reconciliation, however, has been subject to criticism. It is pointed out that it has ambiguous religious overtones. It has also been said that reconciliation is not quantifiable as truth-telling, memorials, compensation, or criminal justice are and it is therefore imponderable, a kind of northern star to guide the navigation. Reconciliation at the individual level, that is between a given victim 
and his or her direct or indirect victimizer is a personal autonomous matter which no public policy may address. Social reconciliation, on the other hand, may be understood as the reconstruction of a broken social contract. It may also be deemed as the attainment of a state in society where the recurrence of past atrocities is considered unthinkable. Further, it may be conceived of as a cultural development in society that leads everyone to recognize his or her opponents, not as enemies, but as adversaries who are entitled to the enjoyment of human rights. Finally, reconciliation may be understood as a situation that permits former victims to relate to their former perpetrators from a position of psychological and personal safety. Ultimately, what is important to keep in mind is that transitional justice is a concept belonging to the field of public ethics. As we saw in the second class of this course, Max Weber proposes an ethics of responsibility approach in which the consequences of political decisions are duly taken into account instead of a more zealous ethics of conviction approach. From this, two main corollaries may be derived when dealing with situations of transition to democracy. The specific measures adopted ought to be applied sequentially, looking for those measures, like a credible report from a trust commission, that shakes the nation's conscience and may open the way to further transitional measures. That which is not possible to change at a given time, at least must not be condoned by the new governments. They must bear in mind that political situations are dynamic and later on it might be possible to effect the necessary changes. Please visit our website mookchile.com and we cordially invite you to watch the next class of this course.